20 minutes just to get through my pan order. I timed it exactly right for class change. <laughs> People were, you know, Everybody all upset weird. about our bridge here. Mm -hmm. and I, I guess I understand that. And, and I sort of felt like we better get that bridge fixed or they may not fix it at all. And right. So I was kind of on the other side of that a little bit. But I have to say, I, it seems like they didn't coordinate all of the projects that they have in a way that makes sense, at least to me. Like, if you're doing the Thetford Bridge, why would you do the one in Hanover, in Hanover the and, same time, and all these paving projects where people have to yeah. people have to do this detour? So let's put a big paving project in the middle of it. Why would you wait a year? I know because they got the money. Well, and, and, the, well, there all the, time. and yeah. the signage, I'm glad I'm not responsible for any of those projects, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I have to tell you, the signage is wacky. And yes, you can't get anywhere from anywhere. It's kind of... Okay, let me see if this is not on because... His eyes are glowing. Well, it's muted. Oh. I'm not muted. I guess it'll all be over in another Jordan, can 12 you months, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's 9.07. Are we good to go? I guess. Okay. I and I will open the September 21st select board meeting. And we are a few minutes late, for which we apologize. But we will begin Jim's with... fault. They were having too much fun. <laughs> yes. I <laughs> will open with public comment. And uh, Dina, do we have public on? We have Jan Williams on. Okay. And Jan, do you wish to speak? Um, I do wish to speak, and my brother, um, I wish to once again request the old to new report, which ha has been, I think, maybe forgotten. I think you indicated, um, I think two meetings ago, that there was no problem making that available, uh, but it has not been. Okay. So let's find out. What's up with that, please? I think the last meeting we mentioned that it hadn't been finalized yet. As soon as it's finalized, there is no problem with making it available. And I it, believe Dan, it's on the Dan, page now. Okay. I believe Dina believes it has now been posted, but we can maybe and ask. Where, will, where is it posted, Dina? Um, I'll have Jordan send you the information. It, there should be a green tab that says assessing. Uh-huh, under okay. assessing. Okay, okay. great. Yeah. I ordered this today under a select board and didn't find it. Yeah, no, it would be under assessing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Brown? I was going to ask the same question, and I, I am content with that answer, and I'll follow <laughs> up if need be. Okay, we like contented people. <laughs> we must have a lot more of them because a lot of empty chairs out there. Yeah, it's quiet. It's been quiet well, for a while. Where do I speak to soon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think Scott's coming in to join us very yes. shortly. And he is in the parking lot right now. While we wait for Scott, mm -hmm. let's look to approve the public and non public session minutes of August 24th. I'll move it. Thank I'll you, second. David. Thank you, Ben. Uh, both sets of minutes. You were okay with the editor. Yep, I did see them. Um, just. I said that. They spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Number 18. That's just to let you know I was reading them. And I, I know. That was the first thing I thought of. I thought, oh, good, he is reading them. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I'm sorry. All those in favor of the 824 public and non public minutes, please ben, say aye. David, aye. And Judy, aye. So those both sets are approved. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And then, how about the September 5th public session? <coughs> and we did get some editing. I did some, Dina did some, and David did some. Right. <laughs> Lots of reading there. Should be good to go. What do we wish to do with those? I'll move them. I'll second them. Thank you, David. Ben, any further comments on those? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Ben, aye. David, aye. And Judy, aye. So those are approved. Okay. Let's 
see. We still have a minute to go. Thank you. Um, we have a manifest came out last night in the amount of $81,615.14. I'll move it. Thank you, Thank you, David. Any further discussion on it? All those in favor say aye. Aye. David, aye. To the aye. So that's approved. Okay. Let me just make that note. I make lots of notes and then I have the time to well, read them. Well, get the signature on these things so fast. You must stay up here all night doing it. <laughs> someone to come in and be an umpire? Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be fair if you used your coach. We paid, well no, we used to have a plenty of volunteers, but as we all know, the volunteerism is... Yeah, thing of the so yes, we do. Wow. Done paving on Goose Pond. They're um, trying to finish up this morning. Um, oh, good. If they don't get finished, they'll be back tomorrow morning because they're making a special mix for Claremont. So he oh. weren't sure if he was going to have to put it up. That's just the base. Okay. So once they get that done, they're coming back. Uh, first week of October to do the shim and then they'll overlay the whole thing. So it'll be done done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Just for my own education, what is the process for paving a road like that? So what, what do you do? What they're, are the putting, steps? they're putting the base down. You need from start and all over. Yeah, like what, like what, how, how do you build up a road like that? Uh, with asphalt or with the dirt? And with asphalt. Uh, they put the base down, two and a half inches of base, and then there. And that's what Hanover uses crushed glass, but we use just gravel or something? Yeah, we get gravel underneath. Um, there I put a foot of gravel. Okay, so there's gravel, and right. then there's a and base of asphalt. Well, and they did the drainage and the culverts and all that stuff before. Uh huh. Yep. Um, the, and then it was graded for um, paving, and then the paving, the layers of paving. So there's multiple layers. So right now they're putting down a base layer of paving, but people will be able to drive on that. Oh, yeah. And then you wait a month for that to sort of settle, and then you put a. We can top it very well. Just the timing. I mean, they're behind okay. with the weather. I mean, they could put the base down in the rain, but which they did a little bit, but um, they can't top in the rain. Okay. So it'll and, sit a couple weeks. Yeah, it'll be. I go on vacation next week. Excellent. So they're gonna come back after that. 
But then I want to let my left hand shot on patrol who's fond of speed. Yes. <laughs> The very, very first year, many, many years ago, that I was on the select board, we were getting complaints of people driving the road, Guzpan Road, chipping their teeth because they were drinking from their coffee cups, and it's the old days of <laughs> ceramic coffee cups, and boom, they do a pothole. <laughs> no, it actually, it's been out pretty good. Scared you guys to go out. Yeah. Take a drive. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Um, it was tight on section from the section I did to the four corners. Mm -hmm. It weren't. There's not much shoulder. Uh, on my section, there's a two foot to three foot shoulder. This, uh, the other section, it's not, it was, I think it was designed for a 19 foot on the road at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it is what it is. There's not a lot of leeway. No. <laughs> Stay in your lane. It took, well, I mean, it's still 21 feet, but it just took, it took Alan quite a while to get it to where he wanted it. Okay. We had to keep going. The center back and forth. So. Uh, and that's that's that little bit of <coughs> the raised area. Yeah. <coughs> okay. And I put on the drain, well, I put a pipe across Goose Bond Road by the four corners mm -hmm. because that hill keeps sliding. Um, and when I did that, I noticed. There isn't much asphalt there. That only got a base layer of asphalt at the time. It never got top topped. So I asked Blacktop if they could just give me an estimate for putting extra shim on that section. And That section, they gave me a price for both, but we just, you know, I just need to get together to see if there is left for money. And this is the um, 14,000. 15,000. Yes. 15. 15. I gave them a copy of this. I mean, if there's more, I'd like to bump it up a little bit from. If we have enough money, I'd like to bump it up a little more okay. for that section because it's the this literally that much uh -huh. base. Boy, that should be two and a half inches. Then you want to bump it up because it'll make it last longer. Yes. Okay. That's the steep hill coming up to the. It's on no, the four corners. It's from the four corners out to the three corners. Oh, I'm not it. doing nothing. I'm not doing any apron on the four corners. Um, that needs to be a project down the road. I think we ought to pave up Thurston's Hill to the first driveway, the first two driveways, eventually. Thurston's on the other side of the road. I think we do, because that, that I'm, so I'm out there grading it every couple weeks. Mm -hmm. No, I, Alan graded it the other day when two days ago, and it's already all washed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that whole section <coughs> and then it goes up base of hill. But um, I need to figure out the water problem. <laughs> this under drains running. There's three under drains running. I put in one under drain that's running. I just went across the bottom of the road mm -hmm. and I cut that pavement and it's running and I hit, um, I did hit quite once I hit yeah. <coughs> that's, that's our whole problem in town is everything's on clay. Yeah. So what would the board think about giving a go ahead for the extra 
flag top if Dina and Scott um, think that there are funds for it. I'm in favor of that. Yeah, me too. Okay. So, so I'll move that. <gasps> so we don't get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Not too worried from the three corners to the town line because that has been overlaid. I mean, it's starting to come up, but I'm not too worried about that. It's just that. Uh, kind of. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Thank you, Ben, David, and Judy. Okay. And that's with the understanding that it may not be fifteen thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars. It may right. be more. It may be more. And as long as he has the money to do it, it's okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Good clarification. Um, okay. Yeah, that would be good. Let's really do as best I mean, as we putting, can. We're putting the money into it. We just supposed to do it. Right. Yeah. Do it right. This is the time to do it. We don't want to go back there again in the near future. No. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have for us? Um, the aprons. I still need to get <clears throat> prices and stuff. That's okay. probably going to be a Warren article. Is that yeah, correct? I believe it will be. So I won't have to have that to you. In two weeks? Yeah. No, but I, I'm glad to be reminded that you are going to be working on that. And, yeah. Um, just as as we build the operating budget, if we know that there's going to be a project that's going to take funds on that side, we like to yeah. be able to weigh those two. Because like uh, Preston Hill and Whipple Hill, that's going to be more, a little more than just grading and paving. Mm -hmm. um, at the bottom of Preston Hill, there's always some mud hole right there. So that'd have to be probably a box cut paper and then grab on top of it. Whipple mm -hmm. Hill, probably the same thing. Okay. And then there's three others? I think there were five total? Yeah, there's um, Shoe Strap. Whipple Hill, Shoe Strap. Shoe Strap should be fine. Okay. But just, we might have to have some crush gravel or something. That'll be minimal. Mm -hmm. The two of them are going to be probably expensive. Or Preston and Whipple. Preston and Whipple. Okay. And then I never got a price for Franklin Hill. <clears throat> I had the guy go out and look at it, and he would suggest one all the way up to that house. Just because of the nature of it. I don't know what kind of stuff we're going to do there. So, so that's a, a different than just an apron. Yeah. And he had 25 feet on the aprons. I think I'd pump that up to like 35. Just because that way the grader is totally off the road. Okay. I'm just gonna... So that'll be a little more. Yeah, it's good, I think, to have enough. At least I know, judging by pinnacle, where it comes down to join, if there's any anything on the feeder road, it goes into the main road and makes right. it kind of a skating experience. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, well, we'll look at that and we'll see where it is and if it gets a Warren article this year or maybe goes off for another year depending yeah. what our expenses are and the income projections. And the, other than that, the other two actual projects I'd like to do is a Warren Hill, a Shim, Some cost estimates for those. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, and I know you've been following the covered bridge and that maybe yeah. we're gonna see what we're gonna be able to do with that. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. That's it. How's the new guys going? They're doing good. Everybody getting along? Yeah. Hard workers? Yeah. You're not afraid of a shovel? No. Do you want Scott to stay for when you talk about Edger Bridge? If you're going to talk about Edger Bridge? He can stay if he wants, or that's his. Uh, we were going to talk about the comments on the Edger Bridge, um, where we are today, which is a little bit further along than we were two weeks ago. Do you want to hang out with us while we chit-chat? Or not? I don't know. They're paving, so... All right, you better get I back. I can just get... We'll let you know. Information. Oh, the Hughes Road Bridge. Yes. The Wooden yes. Bridge. Yes. I talked to... the nails are starting to... the screws are starting to pull up. Alright. Mm. So I talked to <clears throat> Mike Hansen. Um, I haven't been able to get a hold of him again. He left me a message. And he told me the best thing was to pave over. Pave over that wooden bridge. Yep. He said he don't know why we can pave over it. Maybe Dina can email him and get a little more information from him, but yep. he hasn't responded to a bunch of information. So. Yeah. I see. It sounds like that's a common thing to do. Yeah. You know, the wooden sides stay there and it's beautiful that way, but the road the, part the is The decking gets paved. Right. And that <laughs> cements right. the screws. Yeah. And then you kind of blend it in. That's what he left me a voicemail. And he said that that's most towns just pave over. What do you think um, the cost for that would be? I don't know. I think I I did ask Tom to get down and look at it, and I'm just gonna get with her and see how they can do it because it's that ramp that goes up to it. Yeah. <clears throat> and make it all match, so. Yeah, that would be a concern. Yeah. Because your plow could clip that and make a mess. Okay. Well, if so, you can um, maybe get some estimates on that one. Yeah. Can we? And I mean, you need to reach out to them. Just, um, just that. Yeah, and they're going to uh, be due here in a couple weeks. Right before your next meeting. Thank you for very much. Yeah. Appreciate that. Well, budget-wise, that'd be good, too. Yes. I don't know if this is the time to talk about it, but... Yeah, go um, You're here. Not here. Can we make a line item for just for roadside mowing in my budget? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, that would be fine with me. If that is, would be helpful for you, let's put it in right. there. Right. Um, the other thing is I'm going to need tires for the grader next year. And I'm not sure how to go about that. You talked about popping the tire. Yeah. 
Is it very expensive? Well, it can't come out of the capital budget and all that, but right. you, you, you up it and you just explained that it's a one, how many years do they last, usually? So it's a one, one, right, a little increase, and then you don't, it can go back down the next year. So you do all the tires at one time, yeah. just like you would with a vehicle. I got a price on it, I forgot how much you were. And that, so that'll be in your operating budget for next year as well. Yeah. They <coughs> get like two grand, 2500 bucks a piece. A piece, yeah. 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 Right. It's a spending item. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. And that's what the Jeep was. <laughs> <laughs> Which Alan's running. He's happy He's with them. He's happy with them. He says they last pretty well. Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess that's it. You guys, any questions? None from David, none from Ben. All right, thank okay. you very much and have a great vacation. I'll try to. <laughs> <laughs> going, going north, going fishing? Going no, south. Going south. Going south. Going to get a little sunshine. Oh, Florida. <laughs> Florida. Oh, Woo. State I've never been to. It was supposed to be just for Zachary's birthday, but. Turned into a family truck. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have All to right. do special stuff with him oh. while you're there. Mike, did you get a any price on that? Uh, I did not. I, sent you, I, will. I just sent you. The, yeah, because I got eight one budget in for them, and that's where my priority is. Oh, so you're the one that's been texting? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> 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 You're texting him. Oh, Jeez. Okay. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> No, um, when I was a kid, we went to the Elkie Pinocchio Swamp, which is not the Everglades, but it's a big, big swamp in Georgia. Oh, it's very fascinating. One more word there. You just texted me and missed all my But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Went down and bought houses and took their cars down and put some of the bushes and got destroyed. So yeah. they had a lot of money, so they had a lot less. <laughs> 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 you know, that was really good to hear. I know it changes. The guy here farmed or something. Yeah. To build up each year, you put so much like a capital reserve one you put so much in. I don't think you can do that for real. I had a house like that one too. But I, I think you could still do it. You could just have it in your budget every year and not spend it out every year. No, because every year the budget goes away. You can't roll that over. Sorry. But I bet there is some kind of an account. I'll ask I bet the guy. Yeah, find yeah. out. That'd be great. All right. So we are going to do something <clears throat> that's a little different. We have one more of the exempt properties. We have looked at, listened to our assessor, listened to legal, we've been through the whole list with one exception. And um, I believe that we need to finish up this last one in order to move ahead with some of the state stuff. Um, it, I would like to recommend that this board appoint former selectman Michael Hensley to sit with me um, to look at the details on the Killam Bear Center and whether or not it continues to be qualified for an exempt property. And we need a vote of the selectmen to do that. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you. That would be David and Ben and all those in favor of <laughs> Judy I. Okay, so my and you and I should probably actually and now out. you yeah. guys recuse yourself, yes. All right, we can leave. Exactly it. We're supposed to. Yeah. yeah you don't want to be here giving them the stink eye. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Hi, Michael. Hello. Go chat, go chat with Jordan for a minute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Okay, so we had recusal of David in the band, leaving the room, and it is 9.36. All right, I believe that you got some information. Yes. It has been granted exemption in the past, and we just ran into a sticky wicket this year with uh, David being trustee, I believe. He's on the board. He's on the, He's board. On the board now. Yeah, so does he. Right. Okay. So, so there's a little conflict of interest. With yeah, two out, two out of three. That yes. right. makes total sense. That's right. But mine is, and so I have an active interest in bears. My name is Michael Hensley. I have an active interest in bears. And I've worked with them through my job in Hanover, um, but I have no legal, financial, or employment ties at all with the Killam or the Killam Bear Center. Good. But what I do know is that is an active organization, uh, and with tax records that have been submitted, financial statements, and the charitable organization financial statement has submitted, um, and from previous um, reviews. <laughs> of this, which was always awkward and was in fact a tremendous learning experience um, on who's eligible for a charitable organization um, deferment or not having to pay exemption. Exemptions. Um, mine is, I believe that the, Ameri the, the Kill and Bear Center as it operates now is no different than, I mean it's not educational, but it has education components. So it's different than the Crossroad Academy, it's different than the Lyme, Schools. It's not a religious thing, but I do believe that, I mean, it's the similar, it meets the similar financial and state requirements. No different than the Legion, Crossroads, Benedict, the Monshires Lands, the Pathways, and the Upper Brother Land Trust, or the Historians. So, I would say. You think it qualifies? I think it absolutely qualifies. It meets the, the, the requirements and the information that's been submitted to the town and the board. Um, fulfills any and all of the financial statements, and I believe that the Kill and Bear Center um, is eligible to, and I would move that it meets the, um, that it's eligible for the tax exemption, which is in line with all of the other mm -hmm. tax, the other organizations that apply for and receive an exemption from this board. Thank you, Michael, and I will second that, and I will also support the belief that it definitely qualifies. Town Council has determined that the buildings used for the bears would be exempt. <coughs> I also reviewed the <coughs> other information that was submitted, and it does appear that it is in fact exempt, and uh, it is a charitable organization, and it does have an educational component. And it has qualified in the past. I believe it should continue to qualify. So those in favor say aye. Aye. And aye. So it is now qualified as an exempt property. And Michael, I would ask you to sign this list of exempt properties um, above my name. Yep. And then I will sign it. And then the other two can sign for the rest of the Is that okay? Yep, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you for stepping up. And Whatever. <laughs> um, that's, oh, that's a bob. That's, that's the, the owl. owl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, what the heck? What is that? Yeah. Let me turn it off. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> Hoo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, and so before awesome. the guys come back, Yes. My, I would say this is emergency management director and health officer. What I've been texting Scott is, we got through pandemic, but one of our main things for emergency management, we still have some road and other stuff that we're trying to work on, but getting a bigger, powerful blower to clean out those ditches so that when, the, and it always happens during road size, our hurricanes coincide uh -huh. almost always with paving, Mm -hmm. And the other in our roadside mowing, and the problem is, it's like the paving companies. They do state projects, they do large municipal projects, then they do the little towns. The key thing is the ability for us to 
preserve our roads when we have major rain events. Is to get the ditches we've got to get. It's not so much the pulling of the ditches, which they do, you know, a couple times regularly. It's to get the organics out. And the best way. We want a second one. We need a second one. We need a powerful one. And my hope is, is that I mean, the thing is, when you look at the scrutiny that all of our budgets go through, municipal budgets. Oh, this is up three percent. This is up five percent. So let's zoom on. The key thing is, is it's an important thing for the highway and it'll be an operating piece of highway equipment. But it is currently uh, one of the most critical pieces of emergency management equipment is the ability to clean our ditches. Okay. And so we went to, about three years ago, five years ago, we went to this emergency management um, conference, and they pointed this thing out. And the reality is, for a five to $10,000 blow of taxpayer dollars, it can save easily 10 times that cost in one. In man hours. And, and, and in lost roads. I mean, yep. town of Hanover, why did we lose a million dollars worth of load on Bald Hill? Mm -hmm. A million freaking dollars of rebuilding it. And then why, two years later, does Hanover get more rain than Lyme, Orford, and Canaan? And their roads didn't lose it, and we all did. Yep. And the difference is getting rid of the organics. And, 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 and Scotty has properly crowned roads, he has yep. good stuff with ditches and culverts now. We are in as good or better shape than we've been in probably almost 10 years. And the reality is, we still, you can't keep up with the ditches. The ditches, you have to get the organics out. And the most efficient way to do that, in my opinion, is you need to get a fire guy, which was the plan with their paving, but mm -hmm. then they didn't pave. Um, for the rain events, we just gotta take the organics out. And we do that with a blower. And it's cheap money and it, for emergency management, it's number one. So we can look at your budget, we can look at highway budget, which is getting very thin, and we can look at, come on in. Yep, that's all. And we can look at, as we can be here while you talk about this. Yeah, oh yeah, no, I just. we can look at um, fire budget, so three budgets maybe we can call from to see about. Yeah. And I just think, but mine is as an explanation. So when town people are saying, wait, why is this going up so much? Because I mean, all it takes is one set of greater tires to be a stupid amount of money. Right. Yeah. But this as a tool, and why do we need a second? Well, we've got steep dirt roads, not that many people, and the ability, the how Scott has it set up works very well, but it doesn't, it's not as good as like. Getting the ditches out. And yep. it just does, it's just, for course, they're more efficient to be more responsive. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you, Michael. So, Michael, it's a second blower. It's a oh, second emergency blower management is going to be my big, our big push. The number one thing we need to do for emergency management is keep the roads open so we can get police, fire, and EMS and get people the hell out. And another blower is really important. So, what we've had the conversation with myself, um, Aaron, Sean, and Scott, and it's oh, roads. We just need to keep the roads open. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to want to talk to you about, you were a fire department, I want to put a, a hiker in my pond. Awesome. Yep, we can private, probably, we can do that with, uh, there's no more municipal exemption, but we can put a dry hydrant in, and how we put the thing in, we help do it, we cover the cost, and we can put a hydrant in there. We have the forums in the office, just ask to And we're Dave good. Robbins can help with that too, but we'll do that, yeah. and that's how we've done, no, we have like almost two dozen now. Okay. Yeah, kind of bothered. It's when they came and did the insurance thing, that came up right away. Yeah. You know, <coughs> it's, key. Sure it's the easy way to get the water out. So. Yeah, and it's just. You don't have, well, yeah, the Bob Roosevelt's pond out here? No, nope, Bob Woodmuss. <laughs> and. and uh, then, you, that, then it has the need for the community right. out there. And the skiway has one, but the ability for us to tank water. But then you gotta drive. Then you gotta drive it. And the key thing is, is it, it is just that pitch up, and it's icy. You tank water, and tanking water will is effective, but it's so freaking dangerous when it's freaking cold because we're splashing water. And the ability to just, and when it's time is the key thing. When I have to, already have to drive five miles or five six point five miles to your house, we're it's a detriment in time. You want to arrive, have water that's immediately accessible there year round, and that's how we do it with dry hydrant. It's going to be under 1500 bucks. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, good.
Excellent. Could I recuse myself out now? Yes, you can. Okay, okay. Thank you very oh, much for you. stepping I, in. Actually, I was going to ask, uh, just on this blower, so the, the problem is you, you mow the sides of the, of the roads and all this stuff collects in the culverts and when the rain comes, it's blocking ditches. progress. It collects in the it ditches. It collects in the ditches and at the head of the um, culverts. <laughs> and if you look at River right. if you look at River Road Hill up Route 10, mm -hmm. and by River Road, and just take a look at their road, mm -hmm. and they they lost a million dollars. Right. right. They spent it and then they fixed it and um, they it fixed blew it out. Here. It blew out over and over again. Yep. And the original problem was that their the culvert mm -hmm. was plugged with leaves. Yeah. Okay. And so the blower. Gets the leaves out of there. And it gets it out. And right. it's like, if there's a stick okay. or something, they'll jump. I mean, Scotty and those guys, they run the road beforehand. And mm -hmm. you get a br one or two branches. But the reality is, is they, the way they cut with, with roadside mowing, mm -hmm. it gets big, long, granular pieces of right. stuff. Okay. And it just beaver dams up. Sure. And then it comes out. But when you look at rivulets and all the other stuff on the surface, organics, if they blow the organics out, mm -hmm. You preserve road surface, and then you preserve the culverts. And this is out of the ditches as much as... Right out of yeah. the... No, okay. You, you, but the thing is, is, people will be upset when the leaves and stuff are blown up onto their lawn. Okay. But the deal is, no, they get really upset. They but are, is, no, we've had it. But the thing is, um, you have a road. Right. Right, exactly. And mine right. is, and that sort of trumps it. And our number, we've had so many different things that we concentrate on, and the, the primary thing is... Access. Mm -hmm. You gotta get in. You gotta get out. Right. Good. Like, you can't Thank do you. that. The roads are gone. And I. Or Thank you myself. very much. That's what. That's why when you get Thanks, an angry Michael. landowner, you send Michael out. No, I will take it. But mine is like <laughs> no. And then you show it. And there right. you go. Right. Very and good. you're cutting my trees. You're cutting down these beautiful trees. I'm not. Oh, I'm just driving a copper nail in it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 and then the tree falls, and then they lose power, and then they're grumpy. So yeah, yeah I get it. Thank you. It's a can't win situation, right. but we do know how to win <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yep. What did you guys uh, decide to do with? Uh... We're gonna take them out and shoot them. Tar <laughs> <laughs> we approved it. Yes. And the um, we others. We didn't even have to give them the stink eye. No. <laughs> that's right. The um, yes, you need to sign. You guys are, yeah, all sign. the other ones that we have yeah. approved, the three of us. So yeah. it's the full list now. Awesome, um, thank you. It's nice to get that done. It is nice to get that done. And that was really nice of Michael to step up. It was. Good suggestion. Yes, he was happy to do it. And that nice to nice. hear from him about the uh, bigger blower. <laughs> thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay, next we have an abatement for 711 River Road. Received a recommendation from our assessor, and uh, let me get to that. This right here. And the assessor says he is recommending that we grant an abatement. He's completed an inspection of the property and made some adjustments adjustments to the bedroom count and bathroom count. Two of the bedrooms are in the basement, so he allowed an adjustment for the functional obsolescence. The land condition was noted as slightly more than the property cited as comparable. Uh, so an adjustment was made to the land. The revised total assessment for this property is $1,574,800 which is an assessment change reduction of $171,000 and $500, sorry, $171,500. And uh, what that do must we, be way up towards Orford. It's down on the River Road, yeah. It's, um, it's before the cover, right before Bain Stevenson's. All the way down on the left. left. On the riverside. On the riverside. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. On the left, going to Warford. Yes. <laughs> so there's a typo in Todd's right up here. I don't think we care that much, but if you read the 
first par the second sentence in the paragraph beginning recommendation grant, he says, two of the bedrooms are in the basement, so I allowed an adjustment for the, for the... Oh, yes. For, for the, the four functional OSS. Yeah, so we'll take out that second point. Well, we can't yeah. do really sign it, well, unless he redoes it. I can it. just white out the four. Okay. <laughs> well, you might want to have him initial that since he's signed it. Doesn't really it doesn't sounds, change the meaning. No. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. We can. Oh, you haven't done it yet. So. so, what do we wish to do with this abatement? I'll move it. Yeah, I'll second. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, David. Any further discussion? Do we want to know if the taxpayer, like, do we get any taxpayer, do we get the landowner's reaction to this, or they haven't even seen what we're proposing? Not yet. As soon as you guys approve it or disprove it, we will contact them and let them know. They know that he, you know, went there and. Okay. Okay. I would like I, I would like us to vote and then we will entertain your question or comment. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, Judy, aye. Judy, aye. Okay, that's approved. Rich. Thank you. Uh, what was the final number? I didn't get it. Um, the final assessment. Yes. One million. Mm -hmm. Five seven four yep. oh, eight hundred. Nice. I did get it right. Thank you. Okay. Two to sign, please, sir. Judy didn't sign this. Person. No, she hadn't gotten it previously. I can't. I can't. I can't you sign can't it sign without Judy's <laughs> name on it. <laughs> Would you like me to give it to Judy first? I'm happy to. That slows things down. <laughs> Excellent day. Yes. Yes. Very good. Bateman Edgel Bridge. Oh. Uh, we, Dana has been in touch. A with, lot of phone calls, Dana, right? Yes, a lot of phone calls. <laughs> with Stanley Grayton, is that how you say his name? Stan. Grattan. Stan. Grattan. <laughs> Yeah, it's a grabbing. Um, who is a, an authority on old bridges? <laughs> and Dina, I'll let you go ahead and explain the. Okay. Summary. Yeah, he is. He is actually probably the only person in. I don't even know how far away. That's a, he's a specialist in uh, historical bridges. Um, and he's, I don't know if anybody's interested, but he's written a book. You should get the book. It's really great. I've just gotten it. It's wonderful. I'll share it. Anyways. Thank you. <laughs> um, he, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's known all over the place. Very, you know, obviously recommended by everyone. So I had, um, I'm, I'm still working with the Historical Society and hoping for a grant of some sort. Um, part of my questions to him was, you know, if, if this is going to go out to actual bid and writing an RFP, what really needs to go on the RFP and what a good contingency would be and just stuff like that. So there's some concern, not, not just from him, but from other people in the bridge world I've talked to about um, bidding it out. It seems like uh, it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think, um, I don't know, the board should probably make some sort of a, a decision, whether it's the sense of the board or a vote, that it really is an emergency in, in Mr. Groton's um, professional opinion. You know, the, the, the bridge is Oh, yeah, you could cut one cable by going to the river. It's in a position where something little could happen, either water level-wise and affect one of those cables, or tree-wise, and we're going to lose that whole bridge. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I, it, it's probably we just need to get him on this project. Okay. My, my he does all the engineering. My concern, you know, I met with him and the estate engineer, discussed all the problems. My, my concern would be if we 
put it out to bid and went to the lowest bidder, that it would be handled like it was in the past, mm -hmm. which was subpar work, um, clearly subpar work. I mean, the roof isn't structural. They, yeah. know, they ended up putting a cable on, which was not a solution. But that should be a freestanding bridge, structurally freestanding. It should be done by somebody who knows how to do it. If it wasn't a wooden historical bridge, that would be a different story. Yeah, but it is. And right. Just because somebody's a carpenter and wants to do it, uh, right. and will do it for less, doesn't mean that it's something right. we ought to pursue. So, can you explain to me the legal framework in within which we're operating here? If it's an emergency, does that obviate the or take away the need for us to to I would I would presume that normally when we have a significant project we have a legal obligation to go out to bid and solicit bidders and get get and then evaluate those bids and the, the, you know you might not have to do that if you were you know, working on your own property but if we're right. operating as the town of Lyme we probably right. legally have to do that so is there a, some sort of a legal rule that says if you're operating, if it's an emergency that you don't have to do that and you can just award it to somebody without... You don't, you don't have a legal obligation, you have a policy obligation. The town, you guys have a board policy that says that anything above a certain amount you put out, you, you will bid out. Doesn't mean you take the lowest bidder, you can choose yeah. to or not. Uh, but in an emergency situation, you, you don't have to go through the bid process. And because this is also a unique situation where it's a specialty item, like I said, if it was a if it was a concrete bridge that, you know, didn't didn't have the historical wooden whatever, you know, I mean it's just So but your concern, Dina, is presumably if we had a perfect description of what needs to be done, we could put out a bid and, and this guy Stan Grattan is it Grattan or Groton? It's Groton. It's a, it's a O. Oh, it's no, it's an A. It's an A. It's an A. Okay, so Rat. he would Rat. put in a bid, and we would say, right. okay, he knows his stuff, and we would be inclined to take it, right. unless you had some other, you know, great expert who stepped forward, who's, you know, a, right. you know, unless something unusual happened. But right. is, is the concern that we don't even know how to, how to write this up for a bid? No, the concern is that I want you to classify it as an emergency. And I want to move forward with Mr. Oh, because the bid process would take too long? Yeah. How long does yeah. it take? Oh, well, by the time you do the bid process and, and the engineering, engineering and, and wait, 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 so that's what's confusing. So you're gonna you're gonna in order to send it out for bid, you're gonna have to have them with something to bid on, which means So you need to hire an engineer to describe right. what needs to be done. Right. Yeah. And that's and you'd have to expensive. get money and you'd have to get that money. Uh, um, approved at the next town meeting, then it would go out to bid, then it would, you know, it's going to take you. And this guy is capable of doing designing and building a bridge. Right. Yeah, I'm not doubting any of that. I'm just trying to understand right. what hoops we're jumping through here and, and, and uh, make sure we're acting in a way responsibly. That, that's responsible. Yeah. You know, if you could. If, for example, we could just say, hey, we want a bid to fix the, the Edgel Bridge, and that's all it said, and we put it out tomorrow, we'd have a response in, what, 30 month. days? Yeah, probably a month. So maybe even 30 days is too long. I don't know. Well, yeah, but it's, again. But, the, but you can't put out a bid request like that because it's insufficiently detailed for people to be able to evaluate what it is that they need to do. Well, I don't suspect that this is going to get repaired until next spring anyways because of the... Um, well, there's winter. Well, actually, I take that back. The other part of, of bringing it up today is that we have some community members who have um, gotten a hold of me, and um, they're, <laughs> they're going to start a, um, a fund to accept donations. To, because the bridge is historic and it's important to many people in the town, so they think they can get some donations. monetary donations to go towards this project to help us meet the goal of 
the seven hundred thousand dollars that was estimated. Suggested as they're, an they're estimate. putting up a substantial sum as ma matching uh, grants, um, so it it will amount to something. Yep. Oh, well, I think it will be very generous, actually. Yeah. I and think we'll be and surprised. They're very capable of twisting um. arms to get it. <laughs> All right, well, so based on that, from s stepping back from the substantive discussion right. of whether we should do this or what, what uh -huh. makes sense, from, from a sort of policy perspective, it seems to me that uh, characterizing the repair as an emergency situation and moving forward without an open bid is okay, but I would like to get our, our council to listen to what we're proposing here and, yeah. and tell us that we're not breaking any laws. Okay. Sure. Yeah. What would you do, Rich? I don't think this is a bad plan. I think this is a perfectly appropriate way, especially if that. town council. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I don't want the bridge to fall down. Um, no, we and, don't. And we have you know, known and, that this has needed attention for several years now. And, and, you know, it would be weird to go to town meeting and say, we want to get a bunch of money to get hire a consultant to help us write the RFP, and then actually we think it's going to be seven hundred thousand dollars, and we really like to get that money socked away too next March, and that would be a really hard budget. Or, and uh, by the work. way, it's an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, right, right. You know, the thing I have a problem with is spending a bunch of money on uh, design uh, right. by an engineer when you've got a guy who's capable of designing it and building it that's proven. I mean, he, and he couldn't give us, he wouldn't be willing to write the RFP for us. But if you paid him, I'm sure he would. Yeah, but it, it's redundant money, and it's, the yeah. money should be spent on, if you have a, the ability, which he does. I mean, it, I mean, he's done bridges all over the state. I doubt, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I doubt you'll get anybody else to even be interested in He's it, looked at this bridge because over of the, the last, probably, five or eight years, a couple times it anyway. has come a couple times, that's correct. I would like to propose that um, contingent on legal saying, okay, as an emergency, we agree to hire Stanley Great Grattan and um, look to also set up some sort of fund, donation fund, and let the private folks who are so good at fundraising go ahead and do that and then look to have a number somewhere in the near future and we know it'll be about seven hundred thousand dollars to go to town meeting we have a consensus on that do we need a formal I'll, vote I'll move it. Yeah, we move, that just move everything or that's where we get in more trouble but yeah, and it may not have yeah, to go okay. to town meeting. Just Thank you. Know. All those in favor say aye. And uh, David, aye. And Judy, aye. And that would be great if, it, as an emergency, if we can pull right. some funds and go forward. But it, dep it depends on, yeah, the donations. If you get enough uh -huh. donations and then you have your capital reserve money that, that the board For can the bridge. tap into some. You don't want to yep. use it all, obviously, on one bridge, but well, you might. Uh, the, yeah, but it is an emergency, and you yeah. can use those funds without. As far as the goal. fundraising goes, the bridge is iconic. Yep. And it, it stirs the hearts. Yeah. And it will. And we've noticed in the past with um, major projects, we get ten dollar donations, five dollar donations, and we get much larger donations. Mm -hmm. This is a community that cares about the history and the historic structure. But um, we will have legal look at it, yeah. and then we will begin the process, hopefully. Thank you very much. Out of curiosity, what happened? What would happen if there were a catastrophe and the bridge fell into the river next week? Would we rebuild it as a covered bridge or attempt to restore it, or would they just put in a well, you do like bridge? They, they did up at that um, um, place in Haverhill. Um, Anyways, they built this uh, wonderful cover bridge in a field in, to cross, and, and then the wind came and blew it over. There's no bridge there now. Hmm. Is that the one they built in a field or something? No, oh, they built it back where it was. They built it back where it was, but 
it, it, no, no sooner it got done. Than <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that, that would certainly be up to the town, but I can't imagine that they would rebuild, you know, you can't rebuild a historical bridge that collapses. No, you rebuild the That's replica. the idea about it, you build a replica of it, and so, um, why you would make it covered would be no reason to. And we, I'm hopeful, but not uh, necessarily believing that even though the East Thetford Bridge is out, that the traffic hasn't increased too much I don't, that's on the river not, road. That's not the part of the river road. That, I mean, why, why wouldn't you go to no, the No, no, that's ten, where, I mean, that wasn't what I was thinking. I'm thinking because people are taking a shortcut I know, but down the air. I'm, route 10 is a better shortcut. Than it that. certainly is. And I don't want to close that road, but the less traffic that goes over that bridge, the better it is for the bridge right now. Kind of my point. Well, you could lower the weight limit on it. Well, Again, so we'll people ignore the weight limit. They're paying attention right now. We don't know what's underneath, and then Stan pointed that out. And so if you start ripping up the forest, you don't know what the real well, condition is. Well, that was one of the, the contingencies that he put in there that it could cost a little bit more depending on what he it's finds a, under it. 15 or 20% yeah. contingency. Yeah. Um, one thing, I don't know. If this is the right time to talk about it, but I know, or I think I understand that at various times in the past, the bridge has been damaged by people driving vehicles that are too large or mm -hmm. too tall mm -hmm. uh, under the bridge. And I know that on some of the bridges in the, the um, Woodstock, Queechee area, what they've done is, you know, 20 feet before the bridge, they put up two steel poles, and then they hang a bar across at the height limit that's held by chain. So if you're going to hit the bridge, you'll hit that pole beforehand, and uh, you know at least you know you're in trouble, uh, and you don't hit the bridge. I, I wonder if something like that is feasible for this bridge as well, or, or I don't know. Maybe that's a conversation to have with Sean or yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, well, we can. We can, we already actually it came up years ago, um, but it can certainly be revisited. Um, yeah, we did talk was, about doing our something. Our insurance company was not very happy about <laughs> that idea. Hanging a metal bar <laughs> across the road. Well, but if because, they're going to hit the bridge. Well, I know, but I don't. I don't. Um, I I can remember one instance where somebody hit the top of the bridge. All the other damage was done from vandalism, actually. Okay. Okay. So it was from people hitting the side of it. The well, side of it. Like in their vehicle driving, which the a is not going to help. The bridge gets whacked a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, the corner uh, covered bridge gets I whacked a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. If it's not a real problem, then, I, then we don't need to solve it. But it's mostly the weight. That's the big issue when people go over it that way too much. And, you know, Unfortunately, a pickup truck and a trailer truck. is yeah. too much. Well, it's on the trailer, it's axle weight. So. Right. So maybe instead of a bar across the top of the road, we need a trap door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll ask Sean about that. <laughs> sort of like, what was one of those spy movies where oh. the bad guy, yes, you sit yes. in a chair and you go <coughs> down into the shark. That's right. <laughs> That's why I think the airplane should have for passengers <laughs> misbehaving. Well, it's a <laughs> That's right. And Stan may have an idea too. So. Yeah. Okay. We okay, will great. start getting serious about this project. Yes, exciting. Okay. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and, and talking that out. Okay. I looked on Amazon, I can't find this guy's book. So either we have his name spelled okay, wrong or I screwed up. I'll get, I'll get you a, the connection to it, yeah. Um, let's see. We have a, just a note to report that uh, the Department of Revenue Administration did report an error in conduit costs. So this is going to get re-looked at. We do have a specialty lawyer. Um, no, he's an engineer, George Sansusi, who is in charge, uh, hired by the town to review 
all of these utilities and the billing and the assessment and so on. So home assessment bad. He's our um, utility appraiser. And so yes, I'm waiting to hear from them to see if that affects the MS1. In which direction was the error, Dina? Is it going to lower the property value or increase it? It's not, well, it's not the property, it's the utilities. Yeah, the no, utilities, well, but that's the property value. It's the it property would, of the, the oh, value. Sorry, I'm looking at property, buildings, yeah. utilities, that. <laughs> I believe that it was an error. I don't know that. I'd have to look and see. Was it, was it sure. in our favor or the utilities? I don't know. Favor? I'd have to be. This I'm not, note I'm not doesn't sure say. Really but I can assume that it's always in their favor. Yeah, it's probably right there. <laughs> okay. So if if in fact it ends up that it affects our values, which it may not, but we don't know for sure yet, um, then we will have to do a revised MS one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either up or down. Right. Okay. Well, if it's a little bit, we probably don't have to. But if it's a lot. <laughs> so I guess it's obvious, but what I'd like to know is how much is the change in value as a result of the error and in which direction? Correct. And the DRA would probably, well, George, uh, San, San Susis is going to obviously give us a recommendation, but DRA would come back to us anyways and say, look, you have to do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the, we've already had a public hearing. is over, so we, we're just in a waiting game at this point. Um, now, according to my agenda, we are finished with public information, and we will be moving into non-public session. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I will move into non-public session under RSA 91-A, column 3, Roman numeral 2, C, reputation. I'll second. 